These are the BBG calf boots. I bought them for 9,000 rupees around nine months ago from Open Road Riding Gear. I've tested them out a lot. I've used them on rides. I've used them in the cities. So if you've come here for a review of these boots that tells you everything you want to know and if you're considering purchasing them, then you've come to the right place because I've got a lot to share with you. First off, these are the first motorcycle specific boots that I've ever bought. So upgrading from a sport shoe or a trekking shoe to absolutely anything motorcycle specific was going to feel amazing. The BBGs really exceeded expectations here though. They just changed the whole dynamic of the motorcycle ride and just make the whole experience much more pleasant. Rigidity is a property that every motorcycling boot absolutely needs to have and these tick that box perfectly. The support that your foot gets right from your fingers up to the calf is very incredible. The sole is rock solid as well and because of that it feels like your foot is resting on a platform the size of the sole rather than the size of the tiny foot peg. This boosted foot support relaxes your feet quite a lot, especially during long rides. The fit is super snug and comfortable, but I highly recommend that you go to a store and try them on first before buying them. Because the sizing is a little weird on these, there's two versions of the calf boots. There's this version and there's another version which is slightly taller uh, around the front. but. They don't fit the same, which I find slightly weird and I've talked about the whole sizing thing more in detail in my purchase vlog which I'll link up here and down the description. So you can check that out but regardless of that I'd still say go to a shop and try them on. So yes these are comfy boots but they're completely made of leather so you will have to break them in for them to reach their maximum level of comfort for your foot. How do you do that? Well, it's really simple. You just need to use them. Use them as much as possible. Use them on the daily, when you're commuting, use them for long rides, ride more often. And the quicker you do that, the quicker they're gonna break in and feel much more comfortable. So if they feel very, very rock solid and hard at first, don't worry, some of that will go away. But that inherent rigidity that riding boots need to have to protect your foot from twisting or breaking when you fall, still needs to be there, there still needs to be a certain degree of hardness, so that you're just gonna have to get used to. So if you're not used to a riding boot, might come off as slightly intimidating, but trust me, you'll get used to it fairly soon. Are they comfortable enough for daily use? Well, that's a bit of a yes and no situation. So because these are high ankle boots, the cuff comes up quite high, so this restricts your ankle movement, but there's a good reason for that. The reason that is a good thing while you're on rides is because it reduces the chance of your ankle twisting when you fall off your bike when you're in an accident which hopefully doesn't happen but if it does that's where the high ankle is going to protect your foot on the downside when you're walking it leads to a slightly awkward posture because you can't move your ankle as much so if you can change your boots when you reach your destination of commute if you're riding your bike to work if you're riding it to college if you have a separate pair of sports shoes where you can change into at the place Great, wear them, no problem at all. But if you plan on wearing them all day, if you're gonna be walking around with them, then even after breaking in, they're still going to be very uncomfortable. So if that is what you're gonna be doing, then I would not encourage you to buy these shoes, get the lower ankle ones, but keep in mind that these will compromise ankle safety to a certain degree, but will give you more everyday usability. So basically just prioritize what your usage pattern is going to be like and that will tell you whether a high ankle boot is for you or if a low ankle boot is for you. If you have a shitload of money, Buy a high ankle one for rides, buy a low ankle one for the daily. Nothing like it. Also, one more thing you might want to keep in mind for this whole daily basis usage scenario thing. If you're wearing a normal pant, like a jogger or jeans, then the pant isn't going to fit over the cuff of the boot. Whereas if you're wearing a trekking pant or a riding pant, it will fit because those have slightly wider cross sections. So eventually, if you're wearing a jogger or jeans, you're gonna have to tuck it into the boot, right? And that means the pant is gonna get pretty scrunched up inside, which is going to increase your discomfort if you're walking and if you get sweaty, which you will because these boots don't have any ventilation. So sweat plus walking plus scrunched up fabric inside the boot is going to get ridiculously uncomfortable. So again, that's another reason why there's not great to wear all day. Also, if you tuck your pant in, it looks cool when you're riding a bike, but if you're not riding a bike, it just looks like you're showing off. Trust me, when they're done that. The soles are grippy and supportive, but they're not as grippy as I would have liked them to be. Now, I understand this is a sport touring boot, so walking around is really not what they had in mind when they designed it, but I would have appreciated some more grip. I'll tell you why. When I got back from Mumbai, it was raining a lot. My boots were wet. When I finally reached my society, I went into the basement to park it, and I just wanted to scooch the bike slightly backwards to just get my parking position perfect. And because the soles were wet, they just, my feet just kept slipping from underneath me like that. 
and that was pretty annoying. I was very tired, but it's just something that it's an inherent property of the boots. There is, there is some amount of tread here, but basically, if you look like you look at it from the side, it's still quite flat. So they do slip if the sole is wet or if the surface on which you're walking is wet. So just be careful. As far as long distance riding goes, these are great boots. They've never let me down and I'm super pleased with the overall comfort that you get on long rides. As an added bonus, if you wear knee guards, then I'm sure at some point you will have faced the problem of the knee guard not staying where you want it to stay. Even if you fasten all the elastics perfectly, they can slip off your knee and slightly go down, especially if you're walking around, if you've taken a break and you're peeing or if you're having a cup of tea and you can't be asked to take your knee guards off then they can slip down sometimes but because these are high ankle boots and there's quite a lot of uh, areas room at the top here you can tuck the bottom part of the knee guard into the bottom into the top of the boot trust me it works perfectly i've been doing it for about six months now uh, i had that brainwave a little into the time duration i've had owning the boots but yeah tuck the knee guard into the top even if you walk around in the during a ride break you don't have to take the knee guards off they will stay in place so that's another added benefit of these boots or any high ankle boots with a large top area in general okay so now i'm going to talk about the build of the shoes and my overall experience of wearing them in the wet so the build is solid they pretty much stood the test of time i think it's safe to say except some some wear and tear here and there which i'll cover in the next shot so you'll see that uh, these were very dirty when I got from my monsoon ride, so I've cleaned them and I've conditioned them with leather conditioner. So if you have any leathers at all, you should be conditioning them properly. And that's because some essential oils often get stripped from the material and you need to replenish them in order to prevent cracks and breakages from happening. So yeah, let's talk about the fastening system now. This is the, this is the Velcro. Pretty easy to take off, easy to put back on. And once it's on, it's on, it's not going to come off, it's not going to slide off or lose grip or do anything like that. Inside the Velcro, we have the zip. Now this is a bit of, there's some mixed feedback here. So taking it off is, again, this is a very weird angle. I usually have them on the ground while I'm doing this, but taking the zip off is fairly easy. It releases this accordion panel or this inside fabric, which makes the top even wider, very easy to put on because of that. But again, again, I'm saying I'm at a weird angle, but putting the zip back on, can be a bit tricky it still has it still has quite a high resistance even after you have used the boots for quite a long time so you will need some strength to do that and if you deploy a lot of strength then sometimes the zip can graze your finger so that will happen i mean that's not gonna get any looser i've been using them for ages so i'm pretty certain that's as loose as the zip is going to get Okay, so update on the condition of the boots. I'm just gonna get right to it here. There are some tears. I'll just place the boot so you can see it. So there is one tear here that appeared. Okay, I'm not sure if it was the one on this boot or the one on this boot. There's one here. Okay, yeah. So I'll start with uh, this boot, which I believe is the right one. Yeah, also on the right boot. This tear appeared ages ago, so like once I bought the boots, this happened like a month into ownership probably, didn't get wet or anything, it just happened. The tears that you can see on top, these ones, so one, two, three, these tears happened after my Mumbai trip of this monsoon. I even walked through water at one point when we had to stop uh, because Aryan's indicators broke, so uh, this happened due sometime during the trip. Rest of the boot, uh, no tears anywhere. You can see the outer side is perfectly fine. This isn't a tear in case you're wondering, it's just a crease. So, uh, yep, uh, nothing else anywhere on the boot as you can see. Getting to the left boot, we have a similar case in the exact same part of the boot. Some more tears. All of these have happened this monsoon. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's that. So, you can see the inside fabric here. So, the surface level tear is quite a big one here. Same, uh, same place as the other one and some more at the top and yeah some this i wouldn't call this a tear really it's just a bit of wear and tear but again that is on the inside lower part nothing nothing anywhere on the rest of the boot at all as you can see so yeah pretty all right overall point to be noted bbg explicitly says to not use these boots in the wet do not rail, uh, do not wear them in the rain because the leather will get destroyed it'll tear it'll break so why did I use them in the rain then? Well, that's a call that I took. These are the only boots I had at the moment, the only gear that I had. My friends told me that the boot covers, 
just kind of ruin the overall experience and the sole can slip out from underneath as well the some boot covers come with additional rubber soles at the bottom so that can slip out is what i was told so yeah i said is it better to risk sorry is it worse to risk losing my foot or injuring my foot or is it worse to risk losing a boot or damaging my boot so obviously i wore the shoes because what is more stupid than being on a bike ride falling down injuring your foot and then regretting not having the gear on that you own that was my mindset i think it's a pretty good mindset to be honest so i risked the surface level tears and they happened so that's a call i took i'm pretty happy with it no regrets there mind you even though the leather doesn't react very well to water it won't let any water in so the only water that will get into your boot is going to be from the top now because this part doesn't let any water in the disadvantage is if any water does get in through the top it's going to stay inside that's going to make you very uncomfortable because the fabric is going to absorb the water it's going to keep the insides wet it's going to take a very long time to dry after your ride and even during the ride your foot is going to stay wet get white get soft get wrinkly and get blistery and prone to other injuries and abrasions so try your hardest if you absolutely do wear these in the rain which i don't recommend but if you have to wear them if that's going to keep you safe wear them but if you do wear them in the rain put your pant over it like wear a trekking pant or a riding pant and put the pant over the top of the boot so that you can minimize the possibility of water getting in because if it gets in it's going to make your foot pretty damn miserable the rest of the armor and protective inserts have held up just fine super happy with it these are going to be my boots for the foreseeable future i'm not planning on getting new ones anytime soon these are serving me well and they will continue to serve me well i'm fairly sure and yeah these are the boots bbg calf boots the black with red accents is the color that i have many more colors and there's that slightly taller variation available as well the specs of both are pretty much the same but under 10000 you should really be considering these boots lots of safety lots of comfort great looks good sole for riding walking not so much riding in general you can't really go wrong with these in the wet be careful walking about don't get them go for the low ankle ones but yeah solid option and do try them on before you buy do try them on that's one thing that i will tell you to do if you are considering them we found it useful found the video useful leave me a thumbs up drop me a comment if you have any questions hit me up on instagram if you'd like to have a chat and ride safe